You are creating your new poll tax. Believe it. That's what you're going to do. You're creating a new poll tax, and we're going to see the end of you back to, to England, where you belong. You're right back. What's happening today is obviously some people inside forgot that the masses were being called. Right? So they've went in. There's a delegation going to start at 10 o'clock. People for the Tenants Federation are there, for the unions um, and some other people. And they are going to speak uh, for non-eviction. There is a motion from the Labour Party and the SNP and there is an amendment from the Greens which tightens it up and makes it much harder, but still not all the way that we would want, which is no evictions. Can't pay, won't leave. Mike Daly today from the Govern Law Centre is trying to change the law on debt. What he's trying to do, and they're, they're trying to do, is to win the argument that part of the rent, which is the bedroom element, has turned into debt. It's still debt, and it still accumulates, and it's still a problem. Somebody once said that poverty is not a disease, but it's off his hair. And it's absolutely right. Poverty will grind people down and, and because of this. But nevertheless, that would protect people from being evicted if it turned into debt. Because then they would only be chased for the debt rather than the rent arrears. What do we want? No. What do we want? No. What do we want? No. When do we want it? We observed part of the debate in the council chambers and as we went in, Des Lockney or Unite was making his submission. This was a successful event and the council have agreed a non-eviction policy for the bedroom element. Well, we're saying two main things. One is that um, if the council doesn't evict and rent arrears pile up, which we think it will, then uh, money needs to be found, we think, by the Scottish Government to compensate local authorities and housing associations who are doing the right thing, not evicting people. And Shelter has said that will come to about £50 million a year. We think the Scottish Government can find that and it should make it available. And we've asked the Council to lobby the Scottish Government, which actually they've agreed to do in the motion that will be adopted later today. Second thing is that we believe the bedroom tax is discriminatory and abuse of human rights. And we think some Edinburgh tenants will sue the government. And we would encourage them to sue the government. And we'd hope that the City Council will help them, will back them in suing the government like other families down south in England. And the government can be defeated in that way. And if disabled people successfully sue the government, it will torpedo the bedroom tax. Well, I think it's a main thing to me about the bedroom tax is that's an abuse of human rights. Why should you tell a couple, one of whom has got serious degenerative disease like Parkinson's, that they can't have two separate bedrooms? It's completely ridiculous that the government is insisting forcing people out of their homes despite their disabilities. And that's an abuse of human rights and we'd like the British public to really appreciate that point. It basically back moves, any moves, legal or otherwise or political, to get rid of the bedroom tax. What we're going to do is across Edinburgh, we're going to have, and we have had, lots of different meetings. Activists from all over Scotland gathered outside Holyrood in support of the Govern Law Centre petition, which was being submitted to the Parliament. I think the bedroom tax is, is evil. I think it's a direct attack on families and working people and vulnerable people in Scotland. And I think um, we need, to, we need to, to, to stop it and to stop um, stop the tax because it's hurting people. It's, it's, it's hurting families, it's hurting people in my ward and in my Scotland and Fife. The Petitions Committee could let the petition go forward and Labour asked the Scottish Government about four weeks ago to do what they can do now about this bedroom tax and the Scottish Government refused. Rehousing a homeless family at £24,000 is going to cost the public purse far more. Now I think, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, this is not 
and if you speak to the petitioner, very clear, not a campaign about non-payment because they recognise the responsibilities that local authorities and housing associations have. And if we're frank, you know, there are people today still in debt as a consequence of arrears of poll tax. Um, that is not the purpose of this petition. The purpose of this petition is to afford, in very limited circumstances, protection on a consistent basis across Scotland. And I think that's something, hopefully, we would all aspire to. I don't think any member of the committee would wish to see anybody uh, suffering from an eviction. Um, but nonetheless, I think the first and most appropriate course of action for this committee would be to follow our normal practice, and that would be to seek the views of the Scottish Government on the implications of the petition and the issues that it raises. I would recommend from COSLA, and I think also from the DWP as a matter of interest, because I would like to have some a parallel suggestion as to what estimates have been made by them of the likelihood of evictions occurring in Scotland or anywhere else within the United Kingdom as a result of the provisions of the uh, Act. The Scottish Government has responsibility for housing. It does not have responsibility for housing benefit. Uh, it's the Westminster Government that has still control over the benefit system that the people of Scotland rely on uh, to survive uh, and it's really the wider question is whether or not we can continue to allow uh, changes at Westminster level to impact so severely on the people of Scotland. What the UK government, the Lib Dems and the Tories are now saying to people is, see if you have a social rented house and you rent your house from a council or a housing association, actually you're a second class citizen because even if you've had that house 20, 30 years and brought up your family in it, the minute you, hurt, you hit hard times, this is no longer your home. This is just a house that you're getting a wee shot of and therefore you're not entitled to live in it anymore. And I think it's an appalling stigmatisation of those who are in the social rented sector, as we call it, which has always been an absolutely fine and choice place to be as far as Scotland is concerned in terms of housing. And what the SNP government is trying to do here is to, in some way, as far as possible, alleviate some of the hardship and the heartache that that's bringing. So there has been money put into advice services, for example, and you know what we're hoping is that people will recognise that these services are there, get there quickly, try and get the best advice proper. You know, the, the proper advice they can get, the best advice they can get to try and help them out. I had a look at um, the Govan Law Centre proposal when it came forward. It's not actually saying, you know, uh, that the money shouldn't be collected. It's, it seems to be trying to change the basis upon which bedroom tax arrears would be a debt. Debts still have to be collected, so I'm not quite sure why they think this is a big answer. To, to all the problems. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased that um, SNP-controlled councils have followed the Dundee example, and what they're saying is um, that they're not going to start evicting people purely because of bedroom arrears, and that all sorts of different things will be put in place to avoid people losing their homes. So I think that's a better way to, to follow, because from what I can gather from this proposal that's been put forward, if you look at housing associations which operate under a, a particular uh, financial regulation through the regulator, etc., and the rules, it would be compromising them if they were upfront saying, we're not collecting our debts. And, and I actually have faith in social housing providers in Scotland, whether it be councils, whether it be housing associations and registered social landlords, they don't want to evict people. We're not in the business of evicting people. So I think we can get our way through this until we get to the point where we can just abolish the bedroom tax altogether. My suggestion is, madam, that if you listen... My suggestion here is if you listen to what I'm saying, you'll understand the reality is that this country is not cutting welfare, it is managing the growth at a lower just level. Do you want social justice? Yeah, disabled people are speaking And equality. We got in our breakfast. I was able to book the hotel room the night before, so as Willie said, it made it look as if we were going there and meeting one of the guests. We dressed up as if we were going to go to a conference, a capita conference, you know. Um, and when it got to about two minutes to ten, we just walked in. 
I mean, I know that in the press it said things that made it look really exciting, like we evaded security, which sounds to me like you know, some spy film or something like that, but we didn't evade any security at all. Um, neither did we sneak in, which is what the Daily Mail said. We just walked in with the other delegates, and I just said to Cam, go, and we just went down to the front. All the police were looking outwards, they weren't looking inwards. And we went in when all the guests went in with our shortbread and coffee, and we had shortbread and coffee as well. Why are you here in Scotland when we have a different philosophy? We have not elected you and your Tory cohorts. We in Scotland are Joe Tansen's parents. We didn't want you, we didn't need you, we've got more pandas than you, right? We've only got one MP. We want a different Scotland. What it cares for people who are addressed distress and in poverty. You are going to make millions of people homeless, people that really desperately need help. You're making the rich richer and the poor poorer. The people that are going to be in the schemes all across this country are going to oppose you. You are creating your new poll tax. Believe it, that's what you're going to do. You're creating a new poll tax and we're going to see the end of you back to, to England. Where you belong, you're a rat bag. You can clap that if you want. Therefore, you're parasites. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's always good to be welcome. So, of course, when I stood up, I was expecting to be pulled down very quickly, and I was surprised when I was allowed to keep going. And, of course, and I have used the word rat bag. Uh, to describe people, and the dictionary definition is a very unpleasant person, which I thought was apt, and therefore I used that. It's an Edinburgh use uh, word, rat bag, uh, for a very unpleasant person. When Ian Duncan Smith finished his speech, we were being interviewed by the police at that point, and he swept by with his face uh, like a smacked ass in the middle of his entourage, stormed away and refused to do the press conference that was already organised, just cancelled all media events. Having fought this during the 80s and fought Thatcherism, I really hoped that I wasn't going to have to do it again in my life, but we're, we're, we're back and more so. The only thing that I can say is that people are very, very angry this time around and aren't as depressed as they were in the 80s. They're, they're really, really angry. And hopefully that anger will be turned into action. I mean, I, I have to say to the government ministers, be careful what you wish for. Uh, David Freud, who's the architect of welfare reform, brought in by New Labour, retained by the condemns, um, said, well, poor people should be prepared to take the biggest chances because they've got the least to lose, right? You better be careful about what he says there because if you really take everything away from people, they have got everything to fight for and he really ought to think very carefully about the implications of what he's said, right? Um, and the thing that cheered us up was we did tell Ian Duncan Smith that we would be back, we would be coming to get him and this weekend a group of our friends went to his beautiful Buckinghamshire tax dodge mansion, um, put up eviction notices on his front door and had a party in his front garden. We really are not going to go away. Well, <laughs> I could live in there. <laughs> But this is very nice, I must say. This is very, this is very Jane Austen, really. Yeah. What we've seen is the rich changing the law. They have control over the parliament and the law, and they bring in these laws to protect themselves. If I opened a shop at the end of my street saying, benefit cheats, please come in and I will advise you how to, how to cheat, I'd be closed down within five minutes. Do you know at the end of my street, there's a thing called an accountant's and tax, um, a tax um, advisor company. What are they open for business? What are they, they don't need to be in, all you need to do is fill in your form, tell the tax people how much you've earned and pay your tax. No, there, there's a whole industry to avoid tax. If we had a whole industry to avoid uh, losing benefit, there would be a huge hue and cry. But actually, only 0.3% of benefits paid to unemployed people.
over 43% of all benefits are paid to retired people. People who have retired. Now, if you ask the question, do people, is there a massive amount of people on the scrounge? Actually, you wouldn't need to come up with the figures. You come up at 43% of benefit going to scroungers? No. No, that's no the figures. The figure is 0.3. Right? Goes to unemployed people, and a percentage of that actually is, 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 is fraud. Do they live in the same world as us? Are we all human beings? Are we all meant to be pulling together? What kind of society do they want? Well, it's obviously they've decided that society is going to be all divided. The redistribution of wealth has shifted massively. Instead of having coming back after the, the welfare state was created, after the war and whatever, where people were getting some benefits and, and, sh and sharing the wealth that they, they produce, actually the very opposite has happened now. And we need to have a campaign that tackles that question. The redistribution of wealth. Who controls the wealth in this country? Mick McGacky, an old miners leader, said, I'll tell you what, it's not the crumbs on the table, it's whose hands on the knife. In the, in the last 30 years, working class people's hands have been wrestled for the knife. The, the attempt that some working class people had through the Labour Party and others to at least have a share of the cake. What's actually happening now is these fingers have been broken systematically and the knife is completely in the hands of the rich who are dividing up the wealth and obviously they divide it up in their favour. The thing I find most offensive in all of this is the fact that they think we're so stupid, that we don't realise what's going on. And thanks now, I think, to social media, people are much more aware of what's happening and that there's something about the internet is, and social media is how it strips out hierarchies. All these people who set themselves up above us, we can see that there's nothing underneath them at all, except for our labour, actually. They couldn't exist without us, but we could exist very well without them. These are the people that tell us when we express any kind of dissent, any kind of, um, I don't know, mild dissatisfaction with the status quo, that we don't live in the real world, right? These are people who couldn't live in the real world for five minutes. They are the ones who think that they're entitled to have things all their own way, that they don't have to give any, anything, that they don't have to share, that they don't have to pay their fair share of taxes. They think that those things don't apply to them. You know, people say one rule for us and one rule for them. I don't think that's true at all. I think it's one rule for us and no rules for them. They can do exactly what they want and they think that we're stupid enough and weak enough to actually accept it. Well, they've, they've chosen, you know, the wrong people to actually take on now when they try and bring in the bedroom tax in Scotland and universal credit, which is going to be an absolute train wreck. Shelter put out, right, that actually, if we were living from 1971 to now, right, a pint of milk, if it went the same as house prices, a pint of milk would be £10.50. If a chicken had grown in the same price, it would be £51. Houses have spiralled out of control. If you want to be something, then bloody be a troublemaker. Do you know why? Because we are looking now at the devastation, having lived through and been a campaigner against drug addiction and HIV in Edinburgh, which we were, it was quite right and, and still is a, a remaining problem, but the 80s and whatever. We were campaigning then, we've seen the devastation. We are now visiting it writ large. Writ large, it's going to come into our communities in North Edinburgh, in Western Hills, in Govan, and in Dundee, if I wish I knew or I name our scheme in, in, in Dundee. But, you know, right now, the devastation... Fintry. Fintry. 
<laughs> Wherever that is, I'll, we'll visit it. Me and her and, and Cameron. But what we're talking about is the real desperate need for support right now. We know that in every community there is a reason for having so-called spare bedroom. There is a complication in people's lives. The idea that you can put a line through, as the Tory today in the council try to say, oh no, we, we know there's going to be some hardships, but really most people are knowing hardship. They'll find a way, right? They'll find a desperation. And they'll find a way of paying their rent and whatever. We know that many people will. They will find a way. But we also know that tens of thousands, if not potentially up to a million people across this country, will actually find it real hard and desperate. And therefore, we, and in the public meeting in Edinburgh, I'll tell you what happened. Somebody asked the question. I don't know why they asked the question. How many people does it affect in this room? And half the room put their hand up. That meant the other half, it didn't affect. Why were they there? What the hell are they doing there? They're not affected by it. Because they were there because they felt the anger and the passion and the solidarity and the unity that we require to build. And that's what we're in the business of doing. In every place, in every workshop, in every community, in every street. Driving our movement so that we can provide the voice. So that when people stand up and say, if you're with me, then I'm with you. And that echo across our, our country, across Scotland and beyond. I think we've got an opportunity in Scotland because of the impact of the independence, right? People feel that they've got some control, some vote, some way of expressing their opinion. And actually, this is why we find and we'll find that our campaigns and whatever will be stronger for that. We must seize the opportunity of saying, what kind of Scotland do we require? What kind of Scotland did the SNP want? What kind of Scotland was, does Lamont want? And, and we know what the Tories want, but the people that are meant to be on our side, what do they want? In October, when they start paying rent money into people's bank accounts, this bedroom tax is going to be a drop in the ocean. It's going to get far, far worse. They're introducing this, they hope they have it in by October paying into people's bank accounts. Two months before Christmas, you've got some single parent who's been sitting trying to put food on her kids' tables yeah. uh, for an entire year, trying to put trainers on the way to feet. She stays over at the, the Christmas tree, it's empty underneath. Where do you think the rent money's going to go? And who would blame her? Yeah, exactly. A wee history lesson, probably most of you know, but um, in, in Scotland we've already got forum for um, rent strikes. In 1915, uh, the working class women of Glasgow organised a collective non-payment of rent. It was organised predominantly by the working class women, um, figure, prominent figures like Mary Barber, managed to overcome the sectarianism and cultural differences within the communities, just exactly the same problems as we have today, you know? Um, and, and we need to all in our political claws a wee bit and, and start working with each other, you know? Um, they managed to get the Rent and Mortgage Restriction Act which basically led to a freezing of rents. Because, you know, that's, that's the other side of this, eh? They're, they're, they're cutting housing benefit. But if you move, like, if I moved out of my housing association house into the lassie next door's house, who's a private let, they would have to pay double what they're paying for me the now. You know, so, so that's the other thing. It's, they're, they're, they're cutting it the wrong way. Get on board, get organised, get angry, but get organised, and let's say no evictions in Scotland. Thanks for listening. The bedroom tax is the price we are paying for Thatcher sale and yeah. for our house in, in the 80s and the 90s. And we should forget also too, the part of this bill is about the clearing of London for the next property boom. Something that I've been saying to a lot of people, the, the, the fight back against the bedroom tax, for me, is there's it, three parts to it. There's a community where people from your own schemes and your own areas meet up and organise what you're going to do about protesting and, and, and then organise with the wider community and then organise big protests that Willie was talking about. 
There's also the legal aspect, which is places where my organisation comes in and other solicitors down in England have put in judicial reviews. And there's also a part of a media campaign, because as a lot of you have alluded to in here today, there is a lot of misinformation about benefits, about who gets benefits, about scroungers and scrimpers and all this nonsense that demonises people who are on benefits. So it's a three-pronged attack and, and campaign and organisations like ourselves. We know that and we're trying to be involved in all three of these because this isn't the first meeting I've been to and it's not going to be the last. We'll come along to all of them. I'd also like to mirror what Willie was saying about there that he kind of highlighted a, a campaign for shelter. who are asking for the Scottish Government, independent of Govan Law Centre, it's a different thing, to ask for £50 million to subsid subsidise the bedroom tax and it would effectively you wouldn't need to have a no evictions policy because there wouldn't be evictions for the bedroom tax because the money would be there. So again, thanks a lot for listening and I hope to see you again. It was interesting when you, when you actually get the figures because I think there was 470 houses that they call single bedroom um, properties across the council. The problem is every one of them is taken. More, also the housing officer said for every house that comes up that people could possibly go for, and there's a kind of bidding thing in, in the Edinburgh Council, 150 people go for it. So here's every house that the council have, when it becomes available, 150 people, couples, whatever, go for it. So they know, and that is what was being told to the council councillors today, there is no way, if you want to move within the housing stock in Edinburgh, in the area that I live, there is a hundred, a thousand people being affected. There is 27 single bedroom houses. So a thousand people are being encouraged to move or lose benefit, and there's 27 houses. The problem is, there's 27 houses that are occupied at the moment. So there's nowhere for people to go. And therefore, it, that's the cruelty. That's the crime. That's the, the unspeakable behavior, right, of this government, that they know, they know because they have the figures, that the policy of pushing people, they reckon, right, and Shelter and others have put it out, that 400,000 disabled people will be forced out of their homes. They want to come and grab social housing, just as they tried to grab water and electricity and gas and privatise everything. There is a big chunk of the state that they want to grab. This is their plan. Have no doubt about it. This is class war. And we need to have a response to that as a class, as people who deserve housing. When did that happen? When did we lose the right to have a home? Because people who campaigned in the past thought they had won the right to have a house. That social housing and council housing, if you paid your rent, you could live there. You could even pass it on to your family. And if your granddaughters and grandkids came, it was possible to put them up in a little bedroom or a box room or whatever. Now, people have been told you can only have the space that you physically can live in. If you have something called a little bit extra, what is it? Now we'll have the, the attic. Ah, the attic. You could live in the attic. Right, if you've got an attic and you're not filling it with a lodger, well, we're going to, we're going to introduce that. Have any doubt about it. What's going to happen? Universal credits, all the other changes. What we're seeing is a frontal attack on our class by these millionaires, right? And they hate people. They hate the poor. They hate workers. And they are conducting much harder than Thatcher. Thank God she's popped her clogs, right? And I will, if I could, dance on that grave. But nevertheless, I understand that the people who have inherited Thatcher and Thatcher's policies, whether they're Labour or whether Tories, have gone far greater. They are following the strategy that was outlined in 1979 or, beyond, or before that, and they are now conducting themselves to take everything into privatisation.
What we're doing is we've called and are calling systematic public meetings in every area. We're asking people to come along, one, on the basis of want to resist and fight back, but on the other basis, do they want some advice? Do they want to have any support? Do they want to tell the story? We will have people at these meetings that can give them some advice, people from the citizens' advice, information centres, or people who know a, a great deal about um, the benefit uh, laws. And that we will be in solidarity with them. If they're entitled to benefits, then we'll find that out. If they're entitled to, they're being cut and they, they're, 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 they're facing eviction, we will be alongside them, right? We have a number of ideas of how to avoid uh, evictions, and the first one is to make sure the housing associations and the councils have a non-eviction policy, and that the Scottish Government support housing associations and councils across Scotland. They could do that. They could declare tomorrow. And what a magnificent way of showing that we in Scotland aren't going to be suffering the same thing as, as other people, right? And that let, let these people, let people in England and Wales and across, make sure that they, their part of their governments, whether it's in Wales or whatever, or the Westminster government, actually provide the same. Mobilise on a massive basis across the whole of Britain. We will be the physical barrier to that eviction not being carried out. Similar to the poll tax, we will make sure that people are not evicted. Right? And therefore, if somebody wants our support and help to prevent an eviction, what we say is, can't pay, won't leave. Right? That's a simple thing. If you can't pay, don't leave. And we will be there. Have confidence that we will be there. In every area where there is a, an anti-bedroom tax group, then they can call on many, many hundreds and hundreds of people across this city and across Glasgow and Dundee and Aberdeen and the rural parts and the big towns outside uh, the big cities. We, will, we are building a mass movement and that mass movement will make the individual extremely strong. You're a